Good evening, I am Jack Fuji, and welcome to the 14th session of Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management. And this evening we are kind of special because we're, we are coming to you live from the Kauai Community College uh, Culinary Arts Program. And uh, we hope that you'll stay with us this evening. We have a very interesting presentation. Uh, before I go on, uh, if I could have the Elmo, uh, if you have to get a hold of me, there are several ways in which you can get a hold of me. You can get a hold of me via the uh, snail mail at 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720. Or you can get a hold of me by fax at 974-7674 or by phone at 933-0850. And for those of you on the internet, you can get a hold of me by email at uh, jfujii at hawaii.edu. Since we are coming to you live at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience and of course uh, the people here in the studio at Kauai Community College can call in and ask questions of our uh, guests this evening. So we have another very interesting presentation for you this evening, so we hope you don't change the channel. Tonight we are featuring, as I said earlier, the Kauai Community College Culinary Arts Program. And my guests this evening are uh, Clarence Nishi. Uh, Clarence is one of the instructors. Clarence, maybe you can wave your hand. There's Clarence. And also, we have Mark Oyama, the other instructor uh, here at uh, Kauai Community College. And he's supposed to have a, a real good smile and an excellent personality. And finally, we have uh, Billy Gibson who is the third uh, faculty member here at Kauai Community College uh, Food Service Program. So what I'd like to do now is to turn the class over to the Kauai Community College uh, Culinary Arts Program and uh, we'll do some cooking. So either Clarence or Mark or Billy, uh, if you want to say anything, be my guest. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> um, this we're in a new facility. We, this um, facility just opened up last year, so we expanded. Uh, we added on another kitchen plus the bake shop, and we renovated our old kitchen. So now we're in really nice uh, confines, and um, we can do some nice work and showcase our students. Okay, Clarence. Uh, what about Mark? Would you have anything to say? Oh, too many. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're doing the um, the video. T uh, the presentation tonight in our brand new classroom. It's rigged up to do this video uh, program, so hopefully we can do a lot more in the future um, as we come down and we get the bugs out from this first time. Okay, and <laughs> Billy, Billy doesn't have a mic, so he can share the mic with me, so <laughs> you might have a few words to say, Billy. Thank you, Jack. We also have a beautiful dining room here that we uh, share with the community, and we offer lunches twice a week, Wednesdays and Fridays, and uh, the chefs, uh, tutor the students and we have some wonderful wonderful food as you'll see. Is that Sydney. open to the community? It is open to the public. Okay mm -hmm. and if they want to come over here all they have to do is just drive right over and uh, lunch and is it lunch br or breakfast luncheon? It's, it's at lunch 11 okay. 30 to 12 o'clock we seat uh, on Wednesdays and Fridays. Okay so I guess we can do some cooking now and uh, who's our first guest? Is it uh, Seraphim Paul uh, Paul Palomera? Paul Mars. Okay. And uh, Seraphim will be preparing several dishes for us, so go right ahead. First, I will start with a stuffed tofu. Okay. I'll demonstrate how we stuff it. Okay, so. You cut the 
the four triangles. Seraphim is going to prepare a stuffed tofu for us this evening. And I guess the first thing you're going to do is uh, cut, a notch in. cut a notch in the tofu. Is that the more uh, firm tofu that you use? The firm tofu. Okay. And the shrimp is run to the roll, roll coop and it's got onions and garlic and uh, ginger. Okay. Salt and pepper. Okay. Jazz will show how to cook it right now. You can start out by heating up the pan, then adding a drop of oil in there. Okay. When the pan gets nice and hot, he'll place the tofu on the pan. Okay. While so he's doing that, I'll continue with notching out the tofu here. Okay. So uh, you want to first cut the tofu into uh, triangles, the triangles and then cut a notch in there where you can stuff it. And uh, what was the stuffing made out of again? Shrimp. Okay. Green onion. Okay. Salt, pepper. Okay. So the stuffing consists of shrimp, uh, which has been peeled uh, and deveined. Uh, chopped green onions, uh, salt and white pepper, and a little bit of cornstarch also. And cornstarch, right. Okay. It's uh, five ounces of shrimp, uh, half a teaspoon of salt, a pinch of white uh, pepper, and a teaspoon of cornstarch, and uh, green onions to your liking, which has been finely chopped. So, uh, Seraphin, how long have you been with the uh, Kauai Community College uh, Culinary Arts Program? I've been in the program for two years. Three years? Two years. Two years, okay. So how does it got the tofu going? Okay. We'll demonstrate how to start the bun for the manapua. Okay. So when you fry your tofu, you want to fry all sides, all, of, the, sides. all yeah. sides of the tofu, and you just yes. want to brown it, huh? Let's okay. Cook. So while the while stuff... While that's cooking, okay. we'll go with the bun. It's got uh, six ounces of water. Okay. So now uh, Seraphin's going to prepare for you uh, manapua. Starting okay. off with six ounces of water. Right, then we got the yeast. Okay, about well, half an ounce of yeast. And then we got the salt. Okay, about a teaspoon of salt. And two ounces of sugar. Okay, about an ounce of sugar. And some flour. And flour, okay. Uh, that's about uh, ten and a half ounces of cake flour. And I think the last ingredient is about an <clears throat> ounce of shortening, right? Ounce of shortening. Okay. And that's how you make the dough for right. the manapua. So are these uh, dishes that uh, you uh, created yourself, uh, Seraphim? Um, I created a filling, the stuffing and all that. I see. Okay. The dough is a basic stuffed dough that I twisted a little bit. Wow, stuffed tofu looks pretty nice, coming nice and brown on the sides. Now after we get to the dough, it's going to have to put for 30 minutes. Okay. So uh, what was that you had to do for what? what? Proof it. Proof it. Proof it? Yes. And when you proof it, what do you do? Let it sit in a warm place, let it rise. Okay. So you, after you mix it well, then you let it sit for 30 minutes in a nice, uh, warm, fairly warm place to let the, the dough rise. Right. Okay. Well, like the color is saran wrap or a oh, towel. Oh, okay. So you cover the whole pot or, or the bowl with the saran wrap or a, a towel. So 
So how does the tofu look? Does it look pretty good? That's good. Okay. And we have, uh, is it Jeremy here helping out Seraphim? Jez. Jed, okay. Jez, yeah. Jez. Jez Campos. Okay. And of course, Jez will be uh, preparing uh, another dish a little later on. So how do you like, uh, how do you folks like the uh, Kauai Community College uh, uh, food service program? It's very good. Very good? Okay. You've got to say that, right? Guaranteed, guaranteed A, I think, if you say, uh, if you say that, so, okay. From here, I'll let some right. Okay. From here. So now the Manapua mix will be uh, sitting uh, for about 30 minutes. And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture. And uh, this evening is very special because we are coming to you live from the, uh, I guess it's a cooking class here on Kauai, Kauai Community College. And uh, this evening we're featuring the Kauai Community College Food Service Program. And our first uh, student who uh, is preparing uh, uh, various dishes for you is uh, Seraphim Palmaris. And uh, he is preparing for us a stuffed tofu, manapua. And now we're going to the fish manapua, the sun-dried tomatoes, and goat cheese. Okay, now the filling for the manapua is uh, spinach, sun-dried tomato, goat cheese, right? Right. Okay. Well, this is a very uh, interesting filling. It's uh, not the traditional manapua filling, so... Uh, this should be very interesting. That's salt, okay. pepper, <coughs> okay. and goat cheese. Got a teaspoon of uh, salt and pepper, and uh, you have about eight ounces of goat cheese that you're going to just kind of crumble up. And uh, to that, uh, he had added one ounce of sun-dried tomatoes one clove of minced garlic, and uh, half a medium onion, which has been finely nice. chopped, right? Yeah. Okay. Nice. And then you just uh, mix that up mm -hmm. thoroughly? Right, just mix it up. Okay. And what about you, uh, is it, uh, yeah, how long have you been uh, in the uh, food service program? I've been in the food service program for two years now. Okay, and uh, what are your plans when you uh, graduate? Uh, currently I'm working part-time in a restaurant. Oh. And I'm uh, looking for a job full-time. Okay. Now the total of food can be filled with anything you want. Just so happy. I made a chicken mushroom and got some turkey sauce. Okay, so you can also have a chicken mushroom stuffed manapua. Okay, and uh, okay, the uh, I'll go over the ingredients for you. Uh, it consists of one pound of uh, chicken, which has been chopped up fine, finely. Uh, one cup of mushroom chopped. One cup of soy sauce, two tablespoons of sesame oil, one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, half a cup of sugar, one teaspoon of ginger, which has been grated, a teaspoon of garlic minced, and one tablespoon of cornstarch. Is our Elmo working now, or...? Uh, what I'll do is let me put that on the Elmo for you, and then. Uh, and this is the. We serve this as a dim sum un, uh, appetizer. And that's the finished product there. Right. Maybe our overhead camera can go over now. You've prepared the manapua several different ways, right? Right. We have it steamed, 
Okay. Uh, pan fried and baked. Okay, so you can steam it. So when you steam the manapua, how long do you steam the manapua? 20 to 25 minutes. 20 minutes about? 20 to 25. 20 to 25, okay, steamed. And then when you uh, Ten, bake it? You bake it for about 25 minutes. 25 minutes at uh, what degrees? 425. 425, okay. And then uh, what about the Ten pan fried? fried? We do it just like the um, tofu. Tofu. We, we uh, just brown it? Fry it for about, about 10 minutes. Okay. Then we steam it after that. Okay, for about 10 minutes. And there it is. Uh, maybe our overhead camera can uh, zoom into our. Um, Manapua and uh, stuffed tofu. Wow, that looks good, Seraphin. I can't wait to dig into that uh, later on today. Well, thank you very much. And uh, so that uh, uh, ends uh, Seraphin's uh, dishes. And we will have another uh, student coming on board. The next student will be Leonard Nav Navarro. And uh, Leonard Navarro is going to do a nori wrapped ahi and uh, nori wrapped opa, I think. And again, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we are featuring the Kauai Community College uh, Culinary Arts Program. And uh, we have, uh, I think we're going to have about uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 students here this evening. So we have a, a, a well-packed uh, agenda for you, and they're going to prepare all kinds of dishes for you. So we hope you stay with us and don't change the channel. And uh, again, uh, we are very special t uh, tonight to uh, have the honor of being here on, on the Kauai Community College campus and uh, televising from uh, Kauai. And uh, I hope all my students in Hilo uh, will be there in the studio watching the uh, program tonight. But unfortunately, our students in Hilo are going to miss out because they won't have all the food to partake uh, after the class. And all the uh, guests here this evening will be able to sample all the goodies. So our next uh, student is Leonard Navarro. And uh, Leonard, uh, again, uh, as I indicated earlier, will produce a, or prepare, a nori wrapped ahi and opa. So I guess uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Leonard. And uh, we're getting all of his ingredients here. This is going to be like a uh, three ring circus tonight because we're really going to be preparing all kinds of dishes for you, and we have a lot of the Kauai Community College uh, food service students here with us this evening. Okay, so what are we going to do tonight, uh, Leonard? Uh, we're going to be preparing, preparing a, a nori wrap, ahi, and okay. opa, with a wasabi, uh, red blanc sauce, and pepper rice. Okay. Well, there, he's going to he's going to do another dish. It's going to be a leche flan, leche flan. Oh no! Is that oh no? You're just going to do the nori wrap ahi and opa? Yeah. Oh okay. 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 First, um, the ingredients I'm using today are green bell peppers and yellow bell peppers. Okay. For my garnish, I'll be using bok choy and yellow zucchini. For the fish, I'm um, using um, fresh ahi and opa. Okay. Okay. First, uh, preparing the dish, you can start off with. Um, what I'll do is make the sauce first. Okay. Have a blanc sauce. So we're gonna make the sauce first, and uh, Leonard, what year are you in the program here? I'm in the second year. Okay. Okay, when you make the rubber blanc sauce, um, we have to get our ingredients. Uh, what I'm using is um, dry white wine, uh, okay. white wine vinegar, and some chopped shallots. Okay. 
Now we, um, I'll be chopping the shallots. Okay. So you just kind of cut it part ways, huh? Yeah, small lace. And uh, what are your plans after you uh, finish up the program here? Um, try to be an entry level cook in a hotel someday. Oh, okay. And it looks like uh, uh, Mark and uh, Clarence are just staying out of the picture here, letting their students do all the work tonight. Uh, they're standing on the side here. Okay, and what are you adding? I'm um, putting in the um, dry white wine and vinegar. Okay, dry white wine and vinegar. And add your shallots. Okay. That was about one shallot finely uh, diced or minced. What you want to do is um, reduce it by half. Okay. And once you got it reduced, you can add your um, butter, whipping it constantly, and that's about it. Okay. And then? Now that we've got the sauce going, we can do our, um, our pepper rice using our bell peppers. Okay. <coughs> Okay, what I'm going to do is um, cut the peppers into small dice. Mm, that's a good way to cut bell peppers to avoid the seeds. Yeah, you get to utilize the whole pepper. Mm -hmm. Got this done. Oh, you can really uh, wield that knife pretty good. Uh, Clarence, you, you teach your students well here. Okay, we got the green bell pepper. Okay. So we can dice up our yellow bell pepper. And I guess if you wanted to use, you can use red ones too if you wanted to. Huh? Yeah. Okay. But using these uh, yellow bell peppers uh, become very colorful. Yeah. <laughs> Get some color to the dish. So when, when you're in the food service program here, do you have to buy your own uh, knives and things like that? Yeah. I guess just like if you're in the auto mechanics trade, you'd have to buy all your tools, but in uh, culinary art program, you have to buy the tools of the trade too, which are your utensils. So how long have you been cooking? Um, it's my second year. Uh-huh, but have you done some cooking? What, what, what got you into uh, cooking? Did you do it at home? Um, first of all, I started as a dishwasher at Brannicky's. Uh-huh. And it kind of like get me, got me interested in like cooking. So that's where I started off. Cooking. I see. Then I decided to attend um, KCC over there. Okay, and then uh, so you use one one green bell pepper and one yellow. Again, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the Kauai Community College Food Service Program. And uh, we've got a lot of their students who are preparing several dishes for us. So how does the sauce look? Um, it looks... Um, reducing down all right? Yeah, reducing down. Okay. All we have to do is um, add our butter to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is saute our um, peppers. Okay. Ready to add it to the, to the rice. First thing yeah. before you um, cook in a pan, first thing you have to do is make sure our pan is hot. Okay. 
I don't know if you folks back home uh, heard the news about our men of war. They lost three tonight and uh, didn't make me very happy. <laughs> but I guess that's the way it goes. Go ahead. So you graduate uh, at the end of the semester? Yeah. I'll be finishing this semester. Okay. Now that um, our wine and our vinegar is reduced, we can start adding the butter. Okay. And you want to kind of lower the heat a yeah, little Yeah, you want it kind of low heat because if you put it on high heat and whip it up, the butter will break out. Oh, okay. So about how much butter are you using? This is a one serving and I'm using uh, six, six, six ounces of butter. Six ounces of butter, yeah. okay. And kind of just mix it in one at a time? Yeah. Oh, with all that butter in there, it's going to taste good. What, what's your favorite type of cooking? Um, my favorite type of cooking is uh, Pacific Rim. Mm. Have you created some of your own dishes or your own um, recipes? Well, um, I got this dish by, um, from my workplace working at Beach House and Brannikies. Uh -huh. Using like what I've learned at Beach House and Brannikies to put it into one dish ah. to create my own. Okay. So while we are whipping up our butter, we can saute our peppers at the same time. So how did you come up with uh, this dish, uh, Leonard? By just working with different ingredients, like mm -hmm. where I work. So is this kind of an original dish that you're preparing for us, or is uh, it one that you've had in your cookbook for a little while? Actually, um, got it from at Beach House, like working with different ingredients. Ah, okay. And how do you know when the bell peppers are done? I think they're um, kind of soft. Oh, okay. Terrific, these cooks. They can do two things at one time. I'm only good for making sign in. <laughs> And uh, sauce is looking good. Okay, well, we got these two going. We can um, work on do the fish. Okay. This is how it's done. Wrapped with nori, with a layer of opa on the bottom and ahi. I'm using three ounces of each. I see. So in other words, each uh, each ahi. Or oh, each uh, uh, nori wrap consists of both ahi and opa. Yeah. So you got the sauce done. All I have to do is add our wasabi mixer. Can you use uh, other kinds of fish if you wanted to? Depends on your taste, like what what you want to use. You can use ono or mm -hmm. ono or uh, uku. Okay. But you have to like cook it all the way. That's done. First thing what I done with um, the fish was cutting it into portion. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is roll it in lard. First thing I'm gonna do is put the the opa in the middle. Okay. Then roll it up. All right. Make it nice and tight. I'm gonna trim off the sides. 
and the nori just sticks to the uh, sticks to itself, or do you use something to make it stick? Um, it sticks to the fish. Okay. Okay. Now, this is how like you want it to be. Like okay. you can cut it into like sashimi size. Put our peppers over here. And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194A from the island of Kauai, and more specifically from the Kauai Community College. And right now we have Leonard uh, preparing for us a nori wrap ahi and opa. Okay, now you can sear the ahi. Okay. <clears throat> so actually you want the pan kind of hot because you're just searing the outside of the uh, ahi? Yeah. Okay, while we're um, getting our pan ready, we can make our um, wasabi. Okay. I think a teaspoon of wasabi. All right. And a teaspoon of Coleman's mustard. Okay. Then a teaspoon of soy sauce. Okay. And what you want to do is make it to a, to a paste because if you add it like um, powdery to the sauce, your sauce is going to tend to have lumps to it. Mm. Mix it all. Okay. Then you can add it to our sauce. So that mixture goes into the sauce. Yeah. So it's a little bit spicy, yeah, with the mustard and uh, the wasabi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, and then you strain it. Ah. Oh. Strain it to get rid of the shallots. All right. Okay. Add it to our burbank sauce. What is what is that? Um, burbank. I made a oh uh, batch ahead. Can you buy that in the store? Uh, burbank. Yeah. Um, you have to make it from scratch. Oh, okay. Okay, well, we got the sauce ready. We can sear, we can get ready to sear our ahi. Okay. Elpa. Sear to about like medium rare, like when it comes like flaky. Okay. Sear it on all both sides. So you can see from the side how much it's seared, huh? Yeah. More or less. <clears throat> and now we can get ready our starch. Okay. I'm using the bok choy. What I did first was blanch it so it cooks faster. Okay. And for my squash, what I did was um, cut it like this so it could fan out. How you do it is you cut thin slices but not all the way through. So you learned how to do all of this here at Kauai Community College? Yeah, wow. you learn uh, pretty much over during your two years. Wow. So this is how you do it. You can flip the fish now. Okay, and from the side you can actually see uh, it's been seared there on the... So basically the center portion of the fish is uh, is raw, right? Yeah, and just the outside is seared. Okay. I can get rid of dish. So maybe uh, Clarence and uh, Mark, you can come over here and uh, talk about your program and see.
say a few words. Uh, how how can students uh, join the, the the program here? Well, the program is coming up with a new curriculum, so it's going to start off in fall. Uh huh. Um, it's going to be real exciting. We've got a whole new set of classes coming up. Okay. Yeah, it's still a two-year program. We can get an associate of applied science degree, and um, it'll. I think it's sixty. 62 credits, I think, mm -hmm. that to finish and get your, your um, to get your degree. Okay. But we have a lot of uh, lab work that we're going to be doing. So we're going to be doing five days of uh, five days of classes mm -hmm. with three days of dining room service or or lab work classes. And wow. um, on, a, on one of the days, we're going to do lecture and demonstrations for our students. And another day, we're going to do um, just lectures. So oh, it'll, okay. be, um, it'll be a real exciting uh, curriculum that we came up with. And it's going to give us a lot more hands-on training for the students. So it'll be real nice. OK. So Leonard, what are you doing now? I'm um, getting ready to put the dish together. OK. So once you blanch the, the baby pop choy, uh, all you have to do is just kind of put it in the frying pan and just heat it up a little bit? Yeah, heat it up. OK. Okay. Let's heat up. We can do our pepper rice. Okay. That's your basically white rice. Mix it. Oh, so the rice is mixed in with the uh, bell pepper. Yes. Mm. Oh, so you put it inside a, a bowl that's been lined with saran wrap? Yeah, so it doesn't stick. Okay. And we're going to put it right in the middle. Oh, that's how you make the fancy... Uh... Oh. Learning the tricks of the trade here tonight, folks. Then we can um, put our starch. Okay. See, it fans out. Oh, like nice. Then we can cut our fish, cutting it badly. Okay. Oh, I can see the nice uh, seared ahi opa. And you cut it fairly thin, huh? Nice. And very colorful. And we can add our sauce. And garnish with orange tobiko. So, what is that, tobiko? Yeah. And well, that's that the dish. Looks really good. Thank you very much, Leonard. And uh, then we're going to have uh, another Kauai Community College uh, student. Uh, we're going to have uh, Jez Campos. And uh, Jez is going to make a leche flan. A leche flan. That's, uh, now, I don't know what leche flan is, but I'll soon find out. And while uh, they're cleaning up the kitchen here, uh, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture. 
And this evening we're featuring the Kauai Community College Food Service Program. And uh, we have uh, with us here uh, the student from the Kauai Community College uh, Food Service Program. And uh, I'm very honored to be here on the island of Kauai. I have so many followers and viewers from this island, and uh, they always call us. And if we have some time later on, uh, perhaps you can uh, give us a call and ask us some questions of our uh, student chefs this evening. And our uh, next, uh, next we're going to have, uh, yes, Jess. Uh, Jez, uh, you ready? OK. Okay. It's very simple to make. And let me just let you in on some of the ingredients here. We have um, sugar, water, lemon juice, evaporated milk, uh, vanilla extract, egg yolks, and whole eggs. Okay. And when starting your lettuce plant, what you want to do first is prepare your pan. And it's um, caramel syrup. First is a cup of sugar and some water and lemon juice. And you boil it on medium heat for about 15 minutes. And what you want to accomplish is a medium or a dark golden color. And if I can show it to you right here. OK, maybe our overhead camera can catch the uh I guess kind of like a caramelized, uh, caramelized pan, right? Yes. And so you say one cup of sugar and how much water approximately? It's one cup of sugar, half a cup of water, uh -huh. and half a teaspoon of lemon juice. Okay, and then you just kind of kind of heat that down until it comes nice and golden brown like? Okay. And the reason for the lemon juice is so that the sugar doesn't crystallize. Okay. It becomes invert sugar and prevents the crystallization. So you kind of coat the edge of the pan also, right? Yes, the bottom, the bottom of the pan and also the sides. Okay. We've got to fix uh, Jazz's microphone a little bit here so that uh, all of you out there in TV land can hear him. Okay, what's next? Okay. One cup of sugar. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay. Eight each of egg yolks and two each of whole eggs. Okay. For your garnish, will be strawberries, mint leaves, and a little whipped cream. Mmm, that sounds good. Now, first, what you want to do with the evaporated milk is make it scalded, which basically basically means to heat it up until the light skin forms on the top. Okay. So what you're, what you're doing is uh, you're putting the uh, evaporated milk in a bowl and then you put it in hot water. Yes. It's, this is a makeshift steamer. Oh, I see. You want to steam it. I see. Okay. There's um, water in here and I'm boiling it. It's on top of a little rack there. I see. And about how long does that take? It takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Just to heat up. And when that's done, after it's heated up, you just add your sugar. And how much sugar was that again, Bob? Which is a cup of sugar. A cup of sugar, okay, to the heated evaporated milk. And the teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay which will be mixed. Well, so far it's not too bad, huh? So where did you come up with this recipe, Jazz? Uh, I got this recipe from a Filipino recipe book. Oh, so this is kind of a Filipino dish. 
Mm, yes. Okay. So what made you go into the, uh, the food service program? Well, I like to cook and also like to entertain people with food. Okay. And I just chose to see what cooking is all about. All right. So while our milk is uh, steaming, we can go ahead and mix our eight egg yolks. Okay. And two whole eggs. How many egg yolks is that again? That's eight egg yolks and, and two whole eggs. eggs. Okay. So would you consider this kind of a dessert dish? Yes, it's, it's a dessert. Okay. It's a custard. And could, could you use this uh, if you wanted to make like a custard pie also? Mm, probably not. Huh? Probably not. Okay. okay. And then what do you do? Oh, hold on. I'm going to mix it some more. I'm also, when the milk is done, we'll take it out of the steamer. Out of the steamer. Okay. And what I'm going to do is temper the eggs, which means to warm it a little so that when you add the rest of the milk, it doesn't curdle. Oh. So if you put it in all at one time, you're going to have scrambled eggs. Yes. I see. So what year are you uh, in here at the Kauai Community College Food Service Program? This is my second year mm. here at Kauai Community College, the food service program, and I'll be graduating this spring. Do you have a job uh, waiting for you in one of the hotels or? <laughs> Not right now. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is I'm putting my caramelized pan into the steamer. Okay. And I'll be straining the egg mixer into the pan. What is the purpose of straining the eggs? And this is to get rid of the albumin from the eggs. Oh. I and see. also any lumps. I see. And so to break up some bubbles. So the leche flan is nice and smooth, huh? Yes. Wow, that looks good. Okay. And then how long do you let that steam? And we'll cover this and let it simmer. Okay. Steam for about 45 minutes or until set. Okay. And when it's done, it should look like this. Mm. And what you do is you turn it over on the plate, over a sink, so you okay. don't get the syrup all over you. Oh. So, uh, it'll just come right out like that, out of the pan? Yes, the, the sugars on the bottom and sides of the pan will start to melt down and it'll come out easily. Oh, okay, and then now you just, uh, so, so after, after it, uh, you leave it in the steamer, uh, then how long do you let it cool down? You could let it, you could eat it warm. It's very good when it's warm. I see. And also you could chill it and have it as a cold dessert. But you want to uh, pour it onto the, turn it over onto the plate while it's still a little warm. Or does it make a difference? It doesn't really make a difference. Okay. But for safety reasons, you'd like to have it done when it's cool. Wow, that looks like a delicacy. And you can cut it into eight slices. Uh-huh. 
and garnish. Okay. Oh, that one's going to be mine. Okay. Wow, that looks good. With a little whipped cream. Mmm, yummy. Strawberry. Wow, Clarence and Marky, you teach them well here at Kauai Community College. And mint. And waiting for them to make it for us to eat now. Ah. <laughs> and there's your leche flan. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jez. And uh, before we go on, I think Mark is going to say a few words about a breakfast event that's going to be happening here uh, at Kauai Community College. And uh, I think we've got some kind of a tape to roll, so uh, maybe uh, we can roll the tape and then have uh, Mark talk about this bre breakfast event. Actually, this breakfast is held every February. It's our sweetheart breakfast, so it's usually the weekend or the week after uh, Valentine's Day. Um, it's a project that we here at the college we do and we also work in conjunction with the American Culinary Federation of Kauai, the Kauai chapter, mm -hmm. uh, which is a chef's organization on the island. We have a lot of support from them. They do a lot of scholarships for our students over here. And they also um, do some graduation awards and help us with some improvements in our facility with uh, equipment and pans and uh, stoves and you know all of, whatever we're lacking, they put in a lot of money for us to help upgrade. So the community, uh, how does the community get involved? Do you sell tickets or something? We sell tickets. We normally do about 2,000, uh, we feed about 2,000 people for this event. Wow, and As that's every, see, every February, you say? Every February, yeah. Okay. We've been, uh, this, this year has been pretty good. Last year we had a, a pretty good downpour during our breakfast, and it is held outdoors, but we did, you know, we do have tents. As you can see there, they're doing some, uh, carving some ham. We got. Uh, so roughly, how much does it cost to buy a purchase a ticket? Tickets are ten dollars for adults, five dollars for children. Ah, so and that that'll be done next February next also. February, every February we, uh, we do this event. We uh -huh. have a roast beef carving station, a ham carving station. As you can see now, we're doing um, an omelet station. Wow! So you get your choice of all the different ingredients you want to do to uh, do your omelets. We have eggs Benedict, uh, sausages, croissants, entertainment. Wow, the whole Maybe you works. can come down and do some singing for us next year. Ah. We'll do a live cooking show on your on the stage over there. Okay. <laughs> we got some entertainment with dancing, hula dancers, and uh, a, it's a really great event. There's the community comes out and you know, really supports us, and we're real fortunate on the island of Kauai with our community support over here. Well, I think I can make the the hot cakes. Okay, we'll 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 put you on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, our next uh, student, uh, we have three students with us uh, now. We have uh, Tyrone uh, Kua, Mel Matsumoto, and uh, Bryson Fontanella. So they will be preparing for us uh, banana foster and uh, crispy strawberry macadamia nuts. Sounds good. Okay, why don't you folks take over? We're going to start with the banana foster. And what is the banana foster? Yeah. Uh, the banana foster is um, with banana, macadamia nut, and caramel covered with vanilla ice cream over a pastry puff. Okay. And so... Bryson um, right now is cutting the banana. You can cut the banana any way you desire. And okay. And are you folks uh, two-year, uh, second-year students? Um, this is our first year into the program. Ah. And right now, Bryson is going to saute the bananas with a little bit of butter. Okay. So do you want your bananas real ripe or um, better on the little bit firm side? Yeah, more on the yellowish side. Okay. Side. And he adds the bananas. About a teaspoon or teaspoon of macadamia nuts. Okay. And of course if you like macadamia nuts you can put some more on, yeah. right? Okay. As much as you can. 
And what, what is that? And this is the pastry puff. It has a egg wash on top with cinnamon powder. And where do we get that? That, you can get that. Uh, this is not sold in grocery stores. Um, this, this is, this, I have no idea where you can get it, but. Actually, Jack, you can buy that in the grocery store. Oh, you stores. can? It, it is available. Oh, is usually, record industry, we hardly go shopping, so it's hard to. Yeah, <laughs> I usually get it in uh, restaurants or at we, school. We eat at the restaurants, so uh, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> so is that is that uh, pre cooked, or do you have to to uh, bake it or something? Yeah, you bake it at um, for 20 minutes at 325, mm -hmm. and just until it's like golden brown. Okay. Okay, add Bacardi, and he adds like a shot of Bacardi. Really. Now what is that uh, you're adding the uh, rice? Uh, yeah. That's supposed to add, cause a flame, like a... Well, it's kind of like Bacardi, huh? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Smells good from here. What is that? That's the caramel sauce. Oh. The, the caramel sauce contains one pound of butter, five cups sugar, and a quart of whipping cream. So it's kind of fattening, but that's why we try not to pour as much as possible into the pan. Can you buy the caramel sauce, or? Uh, yeah, I it? believe you can. This, this. Okay. But this one you folks made yourself. Huh? Yeah, this we made from scratch. Okay. So did you folks do a lot of practicing for uh, uh, these yes, dishes? Yes, we did. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so guarantee these uh, dishes are going to taste good, huh? Uh, I believe so. Okay, and what is that? That's a vanilla ice cream. Ah. Wow, I'm going to have to eat that now. And for our garnishes, we're using mint with chocolate curls. Okay. I think I'm going to take a break after this. <laughs> <laughs> what is that you're putting on there? That's the chocolate curls. Oh, chocolate curls, I see. And that is our banana foster. Wow. And right now we're going to present our crisp strawberry mac macadamia nut. Okay. Oh, that's almost something that I could do uh, if I can... Yes. Buy that. Uh, what, what do you call that? Uh, the that pa the puff pastry. Yes. Yeah. It's just puff. Puff pastry. Puff it's, pastry. It's, pastry. Yeah, it's real easy to make. Oh, okay. It takes 20 minutes at 3:25. So, what do you like about the uh, food service program here? Uh, just learning all different types of food cuisines. Uh huh. And uh, who do we have now? Is uh, Mel gonna be the? Uh, oh, yeah, this is Mel. Mel Matsumoto. He's okay. making the crisp strawberry macadamia nut. So what's the first thing? The first thing that he does is he'll dip it in the cornstarch, dip the strawberries in the cornstarch. Okay. Then he dips the strawberries in the egg wash, covers the strawberries with macadamia nuts, and then he wraps it with the shredded phyllo wrap. Okay, so what is the first dip there. That's, that's uh, cornstarch. Cornstarch, okay. And then that's just straight eggs. Straight eggs. Okay. And then, and then? The macadamia nut. Oh. And then we use a little phyllo wrap to make it crispy, actually crispy. And uh, what do you call that? That's a shredded phyllo wrap. Oh, okay. And then you kind of egg wash the Egg wash the filo wrap so it stays together. Okay. And then you just deep fry it, huh? Yeah, we deep fry it. Mm. So Mel, uh, you've been in the food service program for how many years? Two semesters. Two, one year, okay. And you just uh, deep fry it until it's kind of golden brown? Golden brown. Uh-huh. And none of these are fattening, Jack. Yeah, so I notice. 
non-fat oil and uh, <laughs> uh, olive oil. <laughs> uh, I see you folks are good at making desserts. Uh, so, so this uh, phyllo, phyllo wrap or whatever it's called, uh, can you buy it shredded like that? Um, tell you the truth, I, I went to Safeway last night, I couldn't find it, so I had to rush down to my workplace and I had to borrow some. Oh, I see. And what do they normally That's use enough. this uh, shredded uh, phyllo wrap for? Do you know? Um, they... I, I have no idea. Sorry. <laughs> well, for sure you can use it for making crispy strawberry macadamia. Oh, with chocolate on top of that, and then you sprinkle it with macadamia nuts, and garnish it with mint. For co extra color. Wow. Now, oops, if I, now, if I had it my way, I'd put more chocolate on there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, pre presentation for you today. Okay, that's the uh, Banana Foster and uh, Crispy Strawberry Macadamia with uh, Tyrone Kua, Mel Matsumoto, and Bryson Fontanella. And thank you very much. And then we're going to have another trio of... Uh, Kauai Community College students, and they're going to prepare for us, uh, let's see, uh, paella, 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 P-A-E-L-L-A. Now, I don't have the slightest idea what paella is, but uh, we'll find out shortly. And uh, again, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we are coming to you live from the uh, television studio or cooking class at Kauai Community College. And uh, I thought it would be a good idea to come to Kauai, your beautiful island here. And uh, I'm glad the rain didn't follow me today. We had an excellent day uh, here on Kauai. The sun was out and uh, I was here with uh, Ralph Kochi of the uh, welding shop. Uh, and he took me around. And also I want to thank uh, Patrick Watase, uh, who's one of the electronic technician here, and uh, Kent Tanigawa, who uh, did a lot of work uh, doing uh, all the uh, technical uh, specialties here, getting the cameras all ready and getting the studio ready, and all our crew in Hilo. I want to say hi to all the people in Hilo. And, uh, I guess, are we ready to start our uh, program here? We, Paeo, and who's going to be the spokesperson? I'm the spokesperson. Okay, why don't you introduce yourself, Eric? Uh, hello, my name is Eric Tanimoto, and to my left here, this is Roger Makugai and Jason Menor, and they'll be cooking a dish. Um, it's a Paeo dish. Okay. Uh, first, we'll start off by um, putting a little oil in the pan heating the pan. Do you want a pretty high heat on that or low uh, heat? High heat is fine. Okay. Then we will be um, sauteing the chicken and chorizo. Okay. About how much chicken are you using? Um, actually right now we're using um, two pounds of chicken breast. Okay. And eight ounces of chorizo. Okay, so that's a kind of skinless uh, chicken breast cut into bite-sized pieces. Okay, and uh, the chorizos are also cut into... Um, actually, there's no base. It's just... Oh, I see, yeah. I see. Okay. And you can buy that uh, in the supermarket? Yeah. Okay. So what year are you folks uh, in your cooking program? Uh, this is all our first year in the program. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that uh, you volunteered to be on TV tonight. Actually, yeah. we'd like to thank you guys for having us. Oh, uh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> I mean, uh, did, did, did your instructors here say that you're going to get an A after coming on the program here this evening? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> You should say that uh, 
Uh, this this is your final that. exam here, and uh, by doing the, the cooking here on our Focus NAG class, uh, <laughs> you should pass the, the, the whole course. Yeah, actually, uh, this was a dish that um, we actually served in our fine dining. Oh. Yeah, and everyone out there, you guys should come and make reservations and come eat at our fine dining facility. Okay, so uh, what, what do you serve at your fine dining? Uh, uh, we have, um, for different weeks, we have um, different cuisines, and this uh -huh. is from the Mediterranean cuisine, and we had Italian cuisine, and a, a whole lot of cuisine. Oh, and, yeah. and that's open to the public? Yes, it is. Okay. And the beautiful thing about Kauai Community College is you, you don't have to buy a parking permit. You can come on campus and park on campus and then uh, uh, come to the food service program and uh, the dining room and have lunch. Okay, um, after the chicken and chorizo is browned, um, you remove it. Okay. And then what are we going to do? And after, um, after we get that all out, then um, in the same oil, we're going to saute the rice, garlic, onions, saffron, tomato, and we're just going to cook it together for a few minutes. Okay, so the rice, you just wash the rice yeah. and then? Okay. The green rice. And also the tomato is uh, seedless. It's a concasse, okay. which is uh, you boil water. And then you coil the tomato, put it next on the back, and put it in until the skin can be peeled. Okay. And you cut it in half and seed it. So this is kind of a rice, rice dish. Yeah. So I hear you folks had to pull numbers to determine when you are going to come on the program, oh, huh? Oh, yeah. You're kind of lucky you weren't the first one, huh? Yeah, I guess so. We were ready, though, so uh, it didn't really matter what number you pulled. All right. I'll give him an A for that. <laughs> okay, then, uh, so what are you going to do now? Uh, we're going to put back the chicken and chorizo. Okay, put the chicken back into the rice. Well, so this is kind of like a rice dish, huh? Yeah, it's the whole work. Oh. Meat, rice. Then mm -hmm. we're going to um, cover um, with some chicken stock. Okay. Oh, this thing's smelling good, folks. Wish you had uh, smell-o-vision. It's, uh, <laughs> mm, it smells good. Cover. And so you say you serve this uh, in your fine dining? Yeah. And uh, this, this, you said, was kind of like a Filipino dish? Uh, Mediterranean. Oh, Mediterranean, yeah. okay. Now right, they're just adding the clams, mushrooms, okay. and shrimp. Clams and mussels and... Shrimp. Shrimp. Wow. And then you just let it uh, simmer. Um, some peas. Okay, some peas. Okay. And then you cover and cook to al dente, which is to the bite. Okay, so when, when the rice is soft, then you know it's ripe. Okay. And how long do you think that takes about to, to um, get the rice about cooked? 15, 15 to 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. And uh, after it's come up, then the finished product, you garnish it with some lemons and some roasted bell peppers, which oh. um, you put it, the bell peppers over the fire until it's black, uh -huh. put it in a plastic bag, let it sit for a little while, then you can uh, run it on the water and take out the skin. Ah. But when you run it on the water, it does lose a little bit of color uh -huh. and taste also. And you can also bake the bell pepper, but it doesn't get as black. Okay, so that's kind of like a... a a roasted bell pepper, yeah. right? And then you slice it slice up and it up. just garnish it. Yeah. Wow, that looks good. Well, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Thank you. That's, uh, that was Eric Tanimoto, Roderick uh, Makugai, and uh, Jason Menor. Thank you very much. Thank that, you. Uh, I can't wait to try out this paella. <laughs> looks good, thank you. And uh, our next uh, trio, will be uh, Jeremy Lloyd, uh, Travis Akasaki, and uh, Ken Nita. And they're going to do a ahi-crusted persilade.
Is that correct? Right. Percy Lade, okay. So who's going to be the spokesperson? I will. All right, why don't you introduce yourself and... Okay. Good evening, my name is Jeremy. This is Travis and Ken. Uh, we're going to be doing the ahi crusted persalab, which is uh, breadcrumbs, parsley, uh, lemon zest, and garlic. Okay. And then um, with that, we're going to do a caramelized onion and mushroom risotto, um, a fresher beurre blanc, and a pancetta uh, spring vegetable ragu. Mm. ragu. So you can kind of explain what they're going to be doing? Okay. Um, Ken here is going to start his uh, reduction for the beurre blanc. Okay. Uh, reduction consists of uh, wine, vinegar, shallots, bay leaf, um, and black peppercorns. And then with that, he's going to uh, add some um, fresh uh, herbs. We have uh, thyme, parsley, and oregano. So what kind of cuisine is this? This is um, Italian with some help from France and okay. Hawaii. Mm. Uh, we got the fresh Hawaii ahi. Um, the risotto is, uh, is Italian. Mm -hmm. The um, risotto is mainly uh, northern Italy. I see. Um, the uh, persalad is uh, Mediterranean. Oh. And uh, the ragu is uh, Mediterranean and Italian. And then the uh, Beurre Blanc is French. Okay. And so are you all two-year students here or? No, this is our first year. Wow. Yeah. How do you like it here at the food service program? I like it a lot. It's, it's really interesting. Um, this semester we've uh, covered everything from China to um, uh, Philippines. Uh, mm. We've done a little bit Italian, so Mediterranean. And then we're just gonna we're gonna end up in uh, Mexico, so okay. kind of gives us a good idea of um, how all the other cuisines are. Can you explain what they're doing now? Yeah, um, Travis here is gonna brown the pancetta. It's an Italian uh, sausage. Okay. And he's gonna lightly brown that to bring out um, flavor. Ah, oh, I see. And then after that, he's gonna add in his onions, and he's gonna. Um, sweat them or, or kind of uh, lightly caramelize them. Okay. And then he's going to add the rest of his vegetables. He has uh, asparagus, uh, uh, fresh fennel, okay. his eggplant. And then what he's going to do is going to simmer that um, with the chicken stock. Oh. And then um, at the end he's going to put in a little bit of uh, tomato paste and that's going to kind of give it some flavor. Okay. And then um, Ken is doing his, uh, his reduction. What's, the, what's in the reduction there? The reduction has um, white vinegar, white wine, shallots, bay leaf, black peppercorns, mm -hmm. and he has some um, sprigs of uh, uh, fresh herbs. Okay. So what are your plans when you finish up here at Kauai Community College? I would like to intern at somewhere and then um, work my way up to uh, a chef position. Oh, okay. I'd like to do some traveling. Okay, what's happening now? Okay, so now Travis is going to put in his onions. Okay. Now that the pancetta is um, cooked. So this uh, Italian sausage you can pick up at the local supermarket? You can probably pick it up at your local gourmet. Oh, I place. see. Okay. It's more of a specialty item. So that's about what, about a half a round onion that's been chopped up? Or? Yeah, it's about half a cup. Okay. Three quarters of a cup. So what do you like most about uh, the food service program here? Eating. Ah, just like our class here, we can eat all the goodies. That's right. Never go hungry. Yeah, I'll say. So do you serve this particular dish uh, at the uh, uh, gourmet room uh, here? Um, I picked this um, up from uh, a little bit of our Italian and our Mediterranean menu. I see. So what's next? All right, so Travis has um, sauteed the onions and then he's just gonna add all of the vegetables now. He can go okay. all the vegetables and then um, He's going to add his chicken stock, and then that's going to 
simmer together for a little while. Okay, so that's about... And that's a, the ragu. Okay, and then uh, what he just added was some red bell peppers? Yeah, those are roasted ro uh, red bell peppers. What we did was uh, we took the, the bell pepper and we put it over an open flame until it charred outside. Uh -huh. And then we peeled that under uh, cold running water. I see. And then we took the inside seeds out and then we diced it up. Okay. And that adds a lot of flavor to it as well. And what was added uh, after that? Is that the green onions or something? Or celery? Um, or no, that's that? fennel. Oh, fennel. Yeah. That's, a, that's really uh, Italian. Oh. Fennel is definitely an Italian ingredient. And then these are asparagus spears he's putting in. Okay, that's kind of a julienne cut or something? Yeah. Okay, and then? And then we have some um, eggplant. Oh, okay, and that's uh, kind of cubed. Right, mm -hmm. it's a large dice. Okay. And then we have some corn. All right. All right, so that's uh, white corn. That's, yes, it's okay. white corn, and then he's going to add about half of that stock. Okay. It's about a cup of stock. All right. And then after that, you just let it um, simmer for probably about three or four minutes. Okay. Until it's done. And then Ken's reduction is getting close. He can probably go ahead and start putting his cream in. Okay. So I'm going to um, start on the, the persilad using panko breadcrumbs, uh, lemon zest from one nut, lemon, crushed red peppers, about a tablespoon of uh, diced garlic, about two tablespoons of uh, freshly diced or minced parsley. Mm -hmm. Just going to mix this up. Okay, that's that's going to coat our ahi. Okay, and then we have this, the pan here is ready to go. Then over on this side, we added some uh, is that artichoke, artichoke hearts. Yep. Okay. So we got a lot of things going on here, folks. So you're going to have to pay attention. I'm getting kind of lost myself, but uh, we'll just go with it. Go with the flow, as they say. We just dip the fish. And then um, we're going to cook that to about medium rare. Okay. In the industry, when they're, the students are working, well, when, you work, when you're cooking in the industry, you've got about three or four things going on at one time. So oh. this is a good experience for them. <laughs> yeah, I think so. A bit longer. So, so all of this is going to come together as uh, one dish uh, in the end, huh? All right. So this is the way they do it in the restaurant or in the uh, hotels, huh? Yeah. They, uh, <clears throat> you can't only do one thing at a time over there. When you get really busy, you need to step up, step it up, and go for it. Okay. And then, he's going to put in his fresh herbs, and then he's also going to. Um, uh, put in his uh, tomato paste after that. Okay. And what are we adding over here? Some. Uh, and then Ken's finishing off his uh, beurre blanc with the uh, butter, and that's going to uh, melt and that's uh, going to emulsify together. And over on this side, we just added some garlic, minced garlic, I think, right? And what's next? What are you, what are you adding there? Basil, chop. Chopped basil? Okay. Yeah, we have chopped basil, chopped parsley, okay. and chopped thyme. Okay. Mm. Looks like it's going to have a lot of uh, nice uh, spices in there. <clears throat> and we're going to, this is, this is um, tomato paste, and that's going to thicken it up. Okay. Well, this, this really looks like gourmet cooking to me. So what, what, uh, what did you think when uh, your uh, professors here told you that you're going to be on Focus Nag to do some cooking? Uh, oh, we're excited. Oh, that's good, good. 
Boy, this is real uh, good cooking here. Looks good. Too bad we can't take a, a shot of the uh, all our guests here in the classroom. Uh, boy, they're, they're having a good time uh, feasting on all this uh, food here. They, uh, I think I, I think they they beat me to it. <laughs> Are they eating our ice cream? <laughs> okay. So we're almost ready to put the whole thing together, yeah, we're right? Ready to play it up now. Okay. <clears throat> so we got three things going here just to make this. Uh, now Ken's gonna strain off his uh, butter sauce. Okay. And you use a so what, cheesecloth or something to strain off the sauce. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to look at the tape uh, afterwards so that uh, I really know how to write this down in my cookbook because <laughs> all of this will be in the, the Ag 194A cookbook, which will be hopefully available uh, at the latter part of May. And of course, if you're interested in the cookbook, uh, you know how to get a hold of me by now. Uh, you can get a hold of me by phone or fax or email or snail mail. Okay, so you're going to plate it up. Okay, so here's the risotto. We went ahead and uh, we pre-cooked that. We just uh, simmered it with some um, clam juice. Okay. What is that now? The this is the caramelized onion and mushroom risotto. Okay. And then we're going to take a little bit of the the ragu. Okay. And this is kind of like a main dish? Right. This would be a main entree. I'm going to take our ahi. Mmm. Okay, and lay a little, little bit of our. Wow. Butter sauce and then just finish it off with a little bit of chili oil. And so Jeremy, what do you call that again? This is the um, ahi um, persalad. Ahi crusted persalad. A little bit of time. This might be kind of hard for me to make, but I think for the Kauai Community College students here, it's a, it's a snap. Okay, that looks good. And we have one more presentation. I don't know if we're going to have time for questions tonight. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, this, uh, San Sandri Harris and uh, Crystal Ramson, and uh, they are going to prepare for you shrimp Bark, that's B-A-R-C. And um, again, I don't know what uh, the uh, shrimp bark is, but uh, in a few minutes here, uh, Sandri and Crystal will show you how to prepare this particular dish. Now, was there supposed to be another tape that we're supposed to roll that, uh, no, we're not gonna roll that other tape? Okay, so uh, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture, and this evening we're featuring the Kauai Community College uh, Food Service Program. And, uh, geez, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight different uh, dishes, so I hope you, you're taking uh, copious notes so that you'll learn how to uh, prepare all these dishes. Are we ready? Okay, we, we have uh, Crystal and uh, is it Chandri? Sandri. Sandri, okay. And this is a shrimp bark, B A R C. So, uh, girls, what year are you in this program? First year, second year? Ah, and what, what got you into the program? 
my mom and dad. They yes. said that they everyone's got to eat, so. Oh. It's a I'm good, very good job to fall back on. So you're going to do a lot of cooking at home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, today we're going to do a shrimp appetizer, and uh, we're going to use crab meat as well, which is um, from the claw or from the leg. Okay. And the recipe is called shrimp bark, which is just shrimp and crab. Crab is spelled backwards. And the ingredients we're going to use today is carrot, red bell pepper, green bell pepper, uh, yellow onion, celery, mm -hmm. crab meat, and shrimp. Okay. Lumpia wrapper, which is um, this brand, which is pretty much a common brand that um, is used a lot now. Okay. Um, we also have sweet Thai chili sauce, and we also have balsamic vinegar. Mm -hmm. We're going to use salt, white pepper, uh, Chinese uh, five spice, and red hot chili, uh, red chili flakes, okay. mayo, and a little bit of um, some white hulled sesame seeds, just for um, garnish and stuff like that. Okay. And so, what you can first want to do is you want to heat up your oil just so that um, it's at a good temperature so that it's all ready just for putting it in so you don't have to wait for the oil and everything okay. will just stay at a good temperature. Everything's all cold and nothing will get um, bacteria and stuff. Okay. Okay. The first step, we're going to go ahead and peel the shrimp and we're going to also butterfly them. Okay. So, and then next, you're going to go ahead and you can already you can already go and peel some of the lumpia wrapper apart, which is actually in a square. So you just want to cut it diagonally, okay. so you get something like this, like that. And you want to have it like really, um, just one piece is good enough. You don't really need two pieces or anything. Okay. Well, we've got so many dishes being prepared tonight, so I, I think we won't have time for uh, phone phone calls. I'm sorry to say. But uh, if, we, if we do uh, kind of run out of time, they'll just go ahead and run the credits. And uh, so while they're preparing the dishes, I just want to thank uh, the uh, Kauai Community College for having me here this evening and also the Kauai Community College Food Service Program uh, for joining us uh, this evening and sharing uh, their recipes with their students. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Should I plug in? Okay. So what you're actually going to do, to you're going to peel your carrot. You're only going to use about half of that. Okay. You're going to use like four to three sticks of celery. Okay. And half of a green onion, a bell pepper, and a red bell pepper, and only half of a yellow onion. Okay. And what you want to do first, you want to go ahead and put your celery and your carrots together after you peel it, and you want to chop it in medium dice. Just go ahead, put it inside the robo cool, and put it on and until it gets to like right like this okay just about like that I see. and that's like perfect because you want to have it still crunchy you don't want to have it like you know baby food yeah you want to <laughs> at least taste the stuff okay and so the next one you're going to put your um your onions and you're going to robocoo that and you want it just a little bit just a little bit smaller but okay. sometimes a, if you have like a small little food processor it's, you know it's a little bit easier and you want to have so much big chunks okay and the next you're just going to go ahead and you're going to go and do your red bell pepper and your green bell pepper. And okay. you want to have like a, a cloth or um, like a napkin towel kind of thing because you want to squeeze the juice, as much juice out as possible. Because as long as you, um, if, you, if you put too much water inside it, it's just going to fall apart. And plus there's going to be a lot of splashing from the oil and so forth. So okay, can, from what I understand, we have about a minute left, so we'll just continue to go on. I also want to thank... Uh, Patrick Watanabe and uh, Kent Tanigawa for uh, being our uh, technical directors here this evening. You said his wrong name, uh, his name wrong, so he put that buzz in for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, next Thursday evening will be our last class, and we will have uh, KTA Superstore from Hilo. Okay. Go ahead. And what you're going to do is, after you 
you go ahead and you drain your crab, and you're going to put it also in, a, also in a napkin towel, and you're going to drain that as well, as much water or crab juice that you can. And you can do that right inside your sink, um, unless you want to keep the crab juice or something.